Well, good morning, everybody, and a happy new year to you all. I hope you've had a really good Christmas, and I hope you're looking forward to the new year. Looking back over the last few weeks, it's been the usual busy time, but it's one in which I have felt particularly blessed. And I hope others have as well, including yourselves. We've had many people, young and old, through the doors of our church, members of our community, members of the church family, and most of whom have enthusiastically celebrated Christmas uh, without necessarily knowing much about the significance of incarnation, of God becoming man and dwelling among us. And that's okay. It's been good to see the smiles and the faces of children, um, hear the expressions of gratitude to people who have been comforted or blessed or helped over this last season. But some people still get quite annoyed at the idea of religion being in Christmas. I remember having a conversation with one a young person a few years back um, saying, oh, it's terrible that you bring Jesus into the services over at the college. And I thought, well, kind of that's the point at Christmas, my friend. Because the real Christmas isn't the escapist end of the year binge fest that many people seem to want. It's about a pregnant girl forced to relocate to a strange town by the order of a foreign occupying power and ending up having her baby in the most unsanitary of situations. <clears throat> it's about a family forced to flee from a more local but very bloodthirsty tyrant who had a track record of ruthlessly eliminating anyone he saw as a threat, including his own wife and other relatives. It's about the slaughter of defenceless children by this same tyrant, who knows he will never be called to account, and the inconsolable grief of the families who know that they will never get justice. It's all a far cry from the traditional kids' nativity, isn't it? But if the world were like the children's nativity, there would have been no need for the birth of Jesus in the first place. Sadly, because of the way we do Christmas in our country, the word incarnation rarely gets mentioned, let alone explained. The reason for the season is missed by most, including, I have to say, many who consider themselves worshippers of the king whose birth we have just celebrated. So why has Matthew included this story that we've just had read in his gospel? Well, because this is the sort of world that needs Jesus. And though we are 2,000 plus years down the line, we're still living in this sort of world, which now, as then, is in desperate need of a saviour, but which continues to do its own thing in its own way. And, says Matthew, until the world does confess Jesus Christ as Lord, the Herods who still appear, they will still get away with it. Ordinary people will still be at the mercy of powers they cannot control. But, and this is so important as we read this rather grim story, despite the powers of darkness doing their worst, they cannot and will not extinguish the light that has come into the world. Three times in this short passage, Matthew boldly states that despite the wickedness of Herod and the imposed suffering he caused the Holy Family, all this is contained within God's plan for his son and his world. The prophecies Matthew refers to had as their context the exodus of Israel from Egypt, the renewal of God's covenant with his people in exile, and a new beginning for the royal house of David. But Matthew is saying that the true fulfillment of these prophecies is Jesus, bringing deliverance where everything seems bleak and hopeless, restoring justice where there is currently only injustice and bringing the rule of heaven into the kingdoms of earth and creating a new people of God who will live and enjoy him forever. The big problem with the modern Christmas is that it is basically an escape into fantasy that doesn't really make much of a difference to the way life is. There were strikes going on before Christmas and there'll be strikes continuing after. The economic situation was grim in November and it shows no sign of getting better in January. But let's celebrate Christmas and forget all that. 
Well, the good news of the biblical Christmas story is that through the coming of God into our world, through the incarnation of his Son, God has provided an escape from sin and death to all who will, like the shepherds and the wise men, worship and adore him, who is Christ the Lord. An escape from sin and death, yes, but not an escape into a bunkered reality, into a cosy, duvet religion, but into the world in the power of God's Spirit to make a difference to those around us and to our communities. For most people, Christmas will soon be over, with only the credit card bill in the middle of January as a rather painful reminder of the season's festivities. Christmas will be over because, for most people, Christmas never really began because God was nowhere in their Christmas. So as we come to the end of the Christmas season and into another new year, I want to encourage you to hold on to the Christmas story, even when the Christmas decorations have been passed away, packed away for another year. Because for those who believe, God is now here. Jesus, born at Christmas, killed yet risen at Easter, now reigns from heaven and will one day reign on earth. By his Spirit, <clears throat> he is present to his people, reminding them day by day that in the darkness of our world, his light is still shining and that the darkness cannot overcome it. By his Spirit, he is also warning us that the world hasn't changed all that much since Herod's day. Men still love darkness rather than light, and we only have to look at the news to see that this is the case. But the key message of Christmas is God is now here. Emmanuel. A title applied to Jesus, but which God has now given to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus who is with us now. The Spirit who is with us as Jesus promised he would be. The Spirit who is Emmanuel. And the God who rescued his son and protected him from the evil that sought to destroy him is the God who is now here in this room, in our lives, in our hearts, right now, if we will let him. And no, there is no guarantee that following Jesus will spare us suffering. What there is is the guarantee that though we die, yet shall we live, and that not even death can separate us from the love of God. Because of Christmas, God is here. He is with us when we mourn and when we rejoice. He is with us when we bid adieu to Christmas 2022 and hello and welcome to 2023. Whether we are looking forward to the new year or we are awaiting its arrival anxiously. God is now here. But for many, if not most, God is nowhere. Nowhere in their Christmases and nowhere in their lives beyond Christmas. Which is why we, the people who rejoice in the truth that God is now here, have a job to do. Like the shepherds and the wise men, we are called to worship and adore, and it should be the top of our New Year resolutions that we make private prayer and public worship our first priority, day by day and week by week. But like the angels who appeared to those shepherds, we also have the task of telling the true story of Christmas. Telling it and demonstrating it by speaking it and living it. If there's one thing I'd like all of us to commit to doing in 2023, it's to being available to God to tell our stories. And I don't just mean the story of how I became a Christian, but the story of what God was doing with me last week, yesterday, today. The stories that have to do with the worlds we live in with the people who don't know Jesus, where there is a point of connection, where there is a, a common understanding of the way the world is. But telling our stories in such a way as to put Jesus in the middle and to tell others the difference Jesus makes. Are we willing to commit ourselves to telling our stories in 2023? And in doing so, and despite the heroes of this world, who will have no rival to their rule, and who will seek to silence those who proclaim that there is a new king in town, to do so counterculturally, subversively, saying to others, 
We live in the same world. We follow a different king. And the joy that we have is available to you also. Come and adore. Come and worship. Come and trust. Find out for yourselves the difference Jesus makes. Remember that Joseph and Mary have been and continue to be obedient to God's word as the story continues concerning their calling to be parents, the parents of God's son. Such obedience brings to them God's guidance and God's protection, even though it also brings danger and discomfort. As we too are obedient to God's word and God's will, as we make it our chief aim to centre our lives on Jesus, as we want to be like those angels telling others the difference Jesus makes, we too will be guided by God and protected by God, though we too might, through our obedience, experience the rejection of others <clears throat> and get ourselves into trouble in one way or another. So for 2023, my charge to myself and to you is, be an angel. Be a messenger. Live your life in obedience to God and spread the good news by telling your stories. Understand that in doing so, you will be playing your part in God's plan to bring this dark world into his glorious light. So may God bless you on your ongoing journey with him. May God bring you surprising joy and deep blessing in 2023. Who knows, this time next year, there might be somebody sitting in this room who's here because of you. That's a prayer worth making. That's a dream worth having. That's a goal worth pursuing. God bless. Happy New Year.